is here. Now broadcasting from, from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. It's Larry O'Connor in for Mark Levin today, 877-381-3811. Always an honor to be sitting in for the great one, the indispensable one. I like to call him the indispensable one because we need him. We can't do without him, Mark Levin. And you won't have to do without him this Sunday night, Life, Liberty, and Levin at 8 p.m. on Fox News. This is going to be a great one. I guess Alan Dershowitz. Boy, two great legal minds getting together, Mark Levin and Alan Dershowitz. I mean, right there. Right there, you're done. But then add to that the amazing story of North Korean defector Yanmi Park. Yanmi Park will sit. And nobody knows authoritarianism, totalitarianism, and the threat of socialism, communism, like someone who has lived under the steel boot of those horrific, evil, satanic, demonic ideologies. The one other person who knows everything there is to know about them is the man who's written books about them over the decades, Mark Levin. That's going to be an amazing show. Life, Liberty, and Levin, this Sunday, 8 p.m. Fox News Channel, Alan Dershowitz, and Yan Me Park. I'm Larry O'Connor. For those uh, uninformed, I'm the morning show host on WMAL in Washington, D.C., which is the uh, biggest, best, most important talk radio station in America, except, of course, for the radio station you're listening to right now. I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. Uh, also, I'm Mark Levin's morning host, so when he wakes up, he hears my voice. That's right. Before he even hears Julie's voice, he hears me. So always a, a pleasure and an honor to sit in for him. i got to tell you, we got so much to talk about today. I don't know if we're going to get to the coronation of King Charles. I'm not going to lie. It might not make the rundown. I know how important it is. I know what a burning issue it is for you. I mean, all Americans are just holding their breath until Charles is anointed and made the ruler of us all. I might have some commentary on Queen Camilla. Did you know that Camilla is actually going to get the title queen? Apparently, it's because husband stealing other woman trollop hobag was too long of a title. So let's just give her queen. I'm sorry. What? No, that's rude. I can't say that. I'm sorry. She was the other woman. I might. I'm, I'm still a Princess Diana fan. OK, I'm going to stay on that side of the whole equation. If I have to choose, if you're going to make me choose. The idea of her way being called queen. All right, I'll set it aside. Here, I said I wasn't going to talk about the coronet. Well, I'm not talking about Charles, but Camilla. Oof. Uh, but we got a lot to talk about. We got a uh, fantastic questioning, if you didn't hear it, of Senator uh, John Kennedy and somebody from the Biden administration who wants to uh, keep you from driving a car because climate. Uh, we A great exchange on Tim Pool's show a YouTube show about abortion. It's it's a great example of why we have to engage people who disagree with us on important critical issues like abortion instead of just ignoring them and staying in our little cone of silence. We got a lot to talk about with the hypocrisy on so-called ethical concerns at the Supreme Court. And we're going to remind you of what a great man Justice Clarence Thomas is as they try to slime him. They continue to try to slime this man. Uh, we're going to talk about how, yes, of course, the Democrats always intended to take away your gas stoves, and they're doing it now. Uh, but I want to start on this Cinco de Mayo with a couple of shots of tequila. No, no, well, that's what I want to do. But that's not what I'm going to do. That would be inappropriate and unprofessional and, frankly, rather dangerous. That would, that would be my Bud Light decision. Me, me doing tequila shots while guest hosting for Mark Levin would be like, you know, that fateful day when somebody at Bud Light said, you know, I've got a good idea. There's this guy on TikTok. <laughs> so, no, I want to do some tequila shots, but instead we're going to focus on the disaster that is Joe Biden's border policy. And I want to specifically listen. We can talk about anything on this program because you guys are uh, pretty much the smartest talk radio listeners in, in the country. But I would really love to hear from people in the border states right now who are listening here coast to coast. If you are in California, uh, if you are uh, on the great KRLA in Los Angeles, if you're uh, listening in Arizona, in Texas, we're on multiple stations in Texas right now. I would love to hear from you about what you are anticipating and expecting 
uh, when on, on May 11th, Title 42 is officially lifted. Title 42, of course, is the provision from the CDC that has been the last remaining fig leaf that Border Patrol agents and the Health and Human Services, as well as DHS, have been able to uh, prevent people from just flooding across the border. But by the way, that's a bit of a, a fake way to present this. It's how the mainstream media is presenting it. It's how the Biden administration is presenting it. So believe it or not, I know this is shocking, but the Biden administration is lying about Title 42 and they're lying about May 11th. I do want to hear from you, though, at 877-381-3811. Come on into the Mark Levin Show and tell me what you're expecting and what you are hoping that your local government at least will do to try to protect your cities and your states from this flood that we're about to see. Now, I know you've been dealing with this flood already. I know that this has been the most unprecedented invasion of our southern border that we've seen in well, pretty much the history of the United States and certainly the history since we tried to protect this border. Uh, but if you listen to our Secretary of Homeland Security, uh, Alejandro Mayorkas, he'll tell you, oh, these are these are just uh, challenges that we're experiencing. It's just nothing but a challenge. And it's nothing new here. Nothing new. We've been dealing with these challenges forever. The challenges that we are experiencing at the border now are not new to the United States of America. There have been so many different times in our history where we have encountered this challenge. Uh Uh-huh. 150,000 illegal border crossings for 25 consecutive months. That's what's documented. That's what we know of. That doesn't even count the gotaways that people have been able to sneak over and never get apprehended. This is the worst crisis on our border in U.S. history. But no, Alejandro Mayorkas, it's just, it's a challenge and it's nothing new. The challenges that we are experiencing at the border now are not new to the United States of America. Yeah, well, (laughs) that man's lying. And he's saying whatever he can to try to keep his job, but I think it's pretty much over. But but let's just be clear here. As everybody in the media says, well, everything's going to get upended. There's nothing we can do on May 11th because the CDC's Title 42 is going to be lifted. And now we can't stop anybody. That's a lie. And I just want to be very, very clear with you. I have interviewed multiple people, including Mark Morgan, a former head of the Department of Homeland Security under President Trump, Brandon Judd, who is currently the president of the Border Patrol Council. I have interviewed Tom Holman, who was the deputy secretary of Homeland Security, uh, Ken Cuccinelli, who was one of the deputy secretaries of Homeland Security. I have spoken to professionals who have worked on border security for decades for multiple presidents. I have spoken to multiple members of Congress and the Senate from border states. And, well, let's face it, every state is a border state at this point under this president. And they all assure me of the exact same fact. The laws exist right now on the books. Not one vote has to be passed in the House or in the Senate. Nothing has to be signed by the president to enact a new law. No new money has to be sent to the border for Homeland Security or for Health and Human Services. No new allocation of funds from the federal treasury needs to go to hire new Border Patrol officers, to hire more administrative officials, to build more housing, temporary shelters for people who are legally crossing. No new money has to be spent on a border wall, for that matter. The money is there for the border wall, has been. No new money has to be sent on any electronic surveillance for any vehicles. Everything exists right now in our federal government to keep this disaster from mounting and exploding on May 11th when Title 42 is busted. The only thing that's needed is the will and the desire of the chief executive of the federal government. The will and desire of the man who sits in the White House. The only reason we have seen this disaster at the border, the only reason we're about to see it exponentially explode into a humanitarian crisis, a child trafficking crisis, a drug trafficking crisis, a fentanyl crisis, and yes, an illegal immigration crisis. The only reason that it's about to explode exponentially on May 11th is because President Joe Biden wills it so. You don't believe me? Ask yourself something. Joe Biden's been president for uh, almost three years now, right? When he came into office, the border immediately, and I mean immediately, January of 2021, 
the border immediately went back to the levels of 150, 200,000 illegal crossings. The, the months before, under President Trump, that was not the case. Asylum seekers were processed in their home countries or in the country of Mexico with the Remain in Mexico uh, policies. Uh, the border wall was almost completed. The uh, the the rules of engagement for the border patrol for people who were illegally crossing was very clear: apprehend and send back, not catch and release. And and immediately. Joe Biden puts his hand in the Bible, swears himself into office, and immediately everything explodes on the border. Why? Nothing was voted. Is there a new immigration law that, you, that we're not aware of? I'm sorry, did, did the Democrats pass something in the House and the Senate, and did Biden sign into law a, a new policy on the border? Was there a new immigration? Of course there wasn't. No, we haven't had a new law enacted with regard to our immigration policies or border security. Not at all. What changed? What changed? In January 21, what changed was the enforcement of our existing law. Our new president is using discretion. Discretion! It's such a grown-up word, isn't it? Wow, Joe Biden has discretion? Yeah, you wouldn't know it from his public statements. Joe Biden is using discretion. And he says, yeah, you know what? I know the law says this, but we're going to go ahead and... and Dad, look the other way. We're going to let people come in. Where we think, you know, instead of remaining in Mexico for your asylum claims, we're going to go ahead and process you here in the country. We're going to separate children from their parents. We're going to go ahead and take unaccompanied minors, and we're going to put them in houses of people that we've never vetted. We have no idea who they are. They could be drug traffickers, gang members, sex offenders. We don't know. But we're just going to go ahead and put them in the house. We're going to lose track of tens of thousands of unaccompanied minors. They're now subject to the worst kind of monsters who prey on young people in this country who are desperate and in need of safety and security. We're just going to go ahead and look the other way on all of that because, you know, we need to reverse everything that Trump did because Trump is an evil man. Basically, well, that and the Democratic Party is funded by organizations who benefit from illegal immigration. And it's not just drug traffickers. It's not just open borders people. It's not just La Raza and all of the... Latino activist groups, no. It's also major corporations, uh, hotels, hospitality people who love that cheap labor. Oh, yeah, they don't get off scot-free on this either. This is human exploitation. And this president has allowed it to happen. And it's going to get worse. Well, there's not a whole lot we can do to stop what's about to happen on May 11th when Title 42 is lifted. Hey, I've got an idea. Enforce existing law. They refuse to do it. They refuse to do it. Instead, they lie to you. Here's Mayorkas today on the border. The border is not open. It has not been open, and it will not be open subsequent to May 11th. Well, that makes everything better. 877-381-3811. You live in a border state? You see what's happening? You tell me. Mayorkas tells me that the border is not open. Now, I see the video of all of these tens and hundreds of thousands of people crossing the border and living on the streets in El Paso, living on the streets outside of shelters, getting bussed and flown all around the country. I don't know. I mean, I want to believe my Secretary of Homeland Security. I would never think that a politician would lie to me. But it sure seems like that's an open border. But you're closer to it than I am. I'm in Washington, D.C. You're actually there. So what are you seeing? 877-381-3811. Oh, uh, by the way, real fast, one other soundbite from Alejandro Mayorkas. Don't worry. Don't be concerned. On this Cinco de Mayo, as you're trying to enjoy your quesadilla and your nachos and your margaritas, by the way, on the rocks with salt, thank you very much. While you're trying to, you know, rest at ease that we're going to somehow stem this tide and solve this problem on the border. The good news is Alejandro Mayorkas, he's got a six-pillar plan, ladies and gentlemen, a six-pillar plan. 
waiting for well over uh, a year. It was in September of 2021 when we first developed a six-pillar plan uh, to address uh, the end of Title 42. We updated that uh, throughout uh, the, the calendar year 2022. So we've been preparing for quite some time, and we are ready. What we are e expecting is indeed a, a surge, um, and what we are doing is planning for different levels of a surge. That is what we do. Nay, hey, I, I feel better. Don't you? We're in good hands now. Boy, he's like General Patton, isn't he? Giving a speech to the troops before the invasion. Whew. Consider for a moment that we could, in fact, be led by incompetence from top to bottom in this government. Just just consider that. And we'll continue the conversation in a moment. 877-381-3811. Yeah, maybe we should have those tequila shots now that I think about it. It's Larry O'Connor in for the indispensable one, Mark Levin. Mark Levin. Now, I know you guys are worried. Federal Reserve staff said banking crises fallout could push the economy into recession this year. But you can do something about that. Learn how to protect the retirement you worked really hard for. I think a great way is to diversify with gold and specifically a gold IRA. That's right, physical gold in your IRA. My favorite gold IRA company is Augusta Precious Metals. You got to call these guys and learn how a gold IRA can help you. So if you've saved 100000 or more in a 401k or an IRA, call Augusta Precious Metals and get their ultimate guide to gold IRAs. Tell them Mark sent you, and they'll give you a free gold coin when you open a gold IRA. Call Augusta Precious Metals today, 877-4-GOLD-IRA. That's 877-4-GOLD-IRA. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions. Get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. What a great company. Six and a half million, that's the number you should be thinking about. I'll give you a second number to think about. Eleven. Eleven, that's the number of electoral votes that the state of Indiana has. Indiana has 11 electoral votes in the presidential election. Why is that important? Well, they have a population of just over six and a half million. And that would make them the 17th most populous state in this country. Six and a half million people, 17th most populous state in the country, 11 electoral college votes for the presidential election. That's the equivalent of the population of illegal immigrants that have passed into this country since Joe Biden became president under three years ago. Six and a half million people, and it's about to grow. Indiana's about to be left in the dust. We're coming up on Massachusetts, Tennessee, and Arizona. But, you know, it's a challenge for Mayorkas. It's just a challenge that we're going to have to fix. Six and a half million. And as the head of the Border Patrol Council, Brandon Judd, told me earlier this week in an interview, this is by design. This is by design. There is no one in the White House who comes to work every single day. There's no one in the Biden administration, no political appointee, no one who came in with Joe Biden who comes to work every day saying, OK, how are we going to stop people from coming into this country illegally? OK, what are we going to do to secure the border? What are we going to do to protect the, the homes of the people who live on the border, the ranchers, the people whose property is being destroyed? What are we going to do to keep people from living on the streets like vagrants all through the border towns across the south of our country? Nobody, not one person. They want this chaos. And in a moment, you're going to tell us exactly what that chaos looks like. Your call's next at 877-381-3811. Larry O'Connor in for Levin. Now, I know you guys are worried. Federal Reserve staff said banking crises fallout could push the economy into recession this year. But you can do something about that. Learn how to protect the retirement you worked really hard for. I think a great way is to diversify with gold and specifically a gold IRA. That's right, physical gold in your IRA. My favorite gold IRA company is Augusta Precious Metals. You got to call these guys and learn how a gold IRA can help you. So if you've saved 100000 or more in a 401k or an IRA, call Augusta Precious Metals and get their ultimate guide to gold IRAs. Tell them Mark sent you and they'll give you a free gold coin 
when you open a gold IRA. Call Augusta Precious Metals today, 877-4-GOLD-IRA. That's 877-4-GOLD-IRA. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions. Get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. What a great company. Plastic Conservative Fire. The Mark Levin Show. Call in now at 877-381-3811. Yeah, it's Larry O'Connor in for Mark Levin. Under the weather today, he'll be back on Monday. And, of course, he'll be uh, with us all Sunday. Life, Liberty, and Levin, 8 p.m. Fox News. Alan Dershowitz and Yanmi Park. But we're talking about the border right now on this Cinco de Mayo. We're talking about the disaster that is Biden's border policy. And let's just be clear. Once again, I want to reiterate, I want to repeat, because I know the people on your Facebook will say, oh, this is why we need immigration reform. No, 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 no. No, we don't need any new laws. We don't need we don't need one new law. The border can be secure and the disaster can be averted. Just enforce the law. Why don't you just enforce the law? And they talk about it like it's some esoteric thing because it's all the way out there. It's way down there. Oh, yeah, it's a crisis. It's a great. Okay, you're not living there. You're not living with it. It was funny to see the mayors of Chicago and New York and Philadelphia and D.C. You know, beg Governor Abbott of Texas, please stop sending these people. We're maxed out. We have no room in our shelters. We have no room in our schools. We have no services to help pay for these people. Thank you. Welcome to the reality of the problem caused by your president, caused by your party. Oh, remember the good old days when you could just scream resist and wring your hands and call your city a sanctuary city and hate has no home here. And uh, we live in a no borders world. Walls only divide us. Well, now you're living with the reality of all of that pablum. Ain't so easy now, is it? But there is a solution. Just enforce the law. All right. I want to hear from you. Every state is, in fact, a border state at this point. 877-381-3811. Chris in Western Colorado, though, listen on Sirius XM. You actually know people who live right on the border. Is that right, Chris? Yes, sir. Thank you for taking my call. My cousins live 76 miles from the border. I would like to challenge Mayorkas to see if he knows it's all what a bailout is. And to your listeners, if they don't know what a bailout is, somebody steals a car that is an illegal or they're working for the illegals, they pile as many people in the car as they can or the vehicle, they drive as fast as they can down the highway, and then they wreck. They wreck into pastures, they wreck into schools, they wreck into homes. My family cannot go out and check cows without being armed, period, every single day. The town they live in has a bailout every single day. Pardon me, single day. It's ridiculous. Yeah, Yeah, you know, Chris, I remember that. I I didn't know what this was until that horrific school shooting you remember down near the border in Texas last year, that elementary school shooting. Uh, Remember that uh, that evil, demonic murderer, mass murderer. He was uh, driving through town and he went to the elementary school and broke in. And I remember people thought there was this the, the first hunch was that this was just another bailout. Right. I I remember that being part of the narrative down there because they live so close to the border. You'll remember it was the Border Patrol agents who actually came and and eventually got into that school when the cops didn't. But it it is it is it's a disaster. And and it is third world stuff that is now in our borders. It's it's and again, it's intentional, Chris. I don't know how your your family down on the border feels about this, but it's as if. They want this country or they want those states that they don't care about on the border to be dragged down to third world level. They are absolutely devastated and they are scared. The school systems, the schools are having to have lockdowns every single day also. It is unreal. And like I said, I'd like to challenge Mayorkas to see if he even knows what a bailout is. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. And let your family down there know that they're in our prayers. This is uh, it's 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 horrific. You know, and think about it. You know, you move down. You want to get away from it all. You want to unplug. You want nice land. It's the American dream. And now your American dream is being trespassed on. It's being used for drug trafficking. It's being used for human smuggling. Uh, and God knows what sexual assaults, rapes. And you you're not allowed to do anything about it. Tim, down in Texas, listen on WBAP, the legendary WBAP in Dallas. What do you think, Tim? How's Texas looking these days? Hey, it's uh, 
You know, it's looking like there's a lot of illegals all around. Uh, Tim, well, t- tell me about what it's doing to the to the society, to your to your schools, to the the facilities that you guys are paying for through your tax dollars, your traffic. I mean, just all of the basics. When when your city council, when your mayor, when your state legislature, when they get together and figure out what their budgets are for, they do it based on the population of the tax paying citizens. And now you've got how many millions that are unaccounted for? We lost him. All right. Good to know. All right. We got a little bit more Mayorkas here, and then we'll get back to more of your calls. Uh, here's, here's again, this is your Secretary of Homeland Security, who's been lying about the border since day one, basically. This is with MSNBC. And this reporter doesn't challenge a damn thing. This is, again, oh, so proud as a peacock, you NBC News people. I love it. It's not even MSNBC. It's NBC News. An exclusive. They got their exclusive with the Secretary of Homeland Security. Was there any question about impeachment in this exclusive interview? And the way you get an exclusive in the news business is you nod along and let the person lie to you. The challenges that we are experiencing at the border now are not new to the United States of America. There have been so many different times in our history where we have encountered this challenge. The challenges that we are experiencing... Nothing new. All right, Steve in Ohio, listening on XM, Sirius XM. Hey, Steve, thanks for calling into the Levin Show. How you doing, Larry? Yeah, you know, every time I hear that guy open his mouth, uh, you know, it just it drives me insane. Any, did he get his job because he's the most moronic person on the face of the earth or what? I, I, I don't you- understand what that statement means. I'll tell you how he got his job. Uh, Gavin Newsom appointed him to a job in the state of California. And then when the Biden administration came in, Gavin Newsom basically unloaded everybody from California. Uh, Health and Human Services came from California. Uh, Of course, uh, uh, Kamala Harris came from California. Mayorkas came from California. Uh, I think Mayorkas was the secretary of state at the time, actually. So he did win an election to get that spot. But of course, California is is. Uh, Democrat dominated. It's a one party state. In fact, in many statewide elections, literally the final general election ballot is between Democrat A and Democrat B. So, of course, that completely, totally one party rule, unaccountable Democrats in California end up populating the Biden administration. Then Gavin Newsom gets to hand select the new attorney general, the new secretary of state and the new senator to replace Kamala Harris, because that's the Democrat utopia. So that's the answer to where he came from, Steve. That's absolutely stunning. So that gives us another reason why California needs to be walled off from the rest of the rest of the thinking <laughs> country. The I just another wall I, we should be building. Yeah, well, you know, I got you know, wall seemed to work under Trump. I don't but, understand why it is that Mayorkas can't understand why they can just work again. But Steve, Steve, I mentioned in my opening monologue that one of the, listen, we all know, you, y'all are Mark Levin listeners, so you're smart enough to know that many things in this country can be boiled down to supply and demand. There is obviously a supply of cheap labor coming up from south of our border, and there is demand. We have corporations in this country who are exploiting these people and taking advantage of them. Democrats and a small handful of Republicans, sadly, are just fine with that. That's why the status quo has been accepted for so long. Right. And, you know, part of the problem is, is that there is a method when you hire someone to check their credentials. And when you go on the the government website to determine whether or not the credentials that person gives you when they're applying for a job is, in fact, legitimate or not, as soon as they're not legitimate, you know, and, and this is where this is the bigger picture. As soon as you find out they're not legitimate, yet you give them a job at a lower at a lower wage, you're taking a job away from a legitimate American. Okay. But here's the thing. These illegal aliens that come in here are, A, getting paid less, but they're paying taxes into a system they're never going to get back. They're never going to get the Social Security uh, money in that they pay in because they're not going to be here long enough or they want to fly underneath the radar. So that's how our government turns around and shores up their iniquities in the way that they spend money. Well, Steve, that's actually going to be the next demand. You just wait for it. 
They're going to say 15 years from now, 20 years from now, hey, hey, we were working. Oh, sure. We had stolen identifications. We had we had participated in identity theft. We were using somebody else's Social Security number, but we were paying and we deserve our Social Security. We deserve our Medicare. We deserve our benefits. In some states, they're already giving them state medical benefits. That'll be the next demand, Steve. Don't 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 count your chickens. Thank you for the call in Ohio, by the way. Uh, there's still some voices of reason. There's still some people who recognize exactly what's happening here. And I want to reiterate, this is a deliberate choice. This isn't an accident. This isn't an, oh, my gosh, it's a crisis. They're acting like it's a hurricane. They're acting like it's some tornado that came by or an earthquake. Oh, what are you going to do? It's a disaster. We just got to, you know, we'll pick up the pieces. We'll call in FEMA. No, they want this. This is by design. Not only have they completely ignored existing law, and just look the other way. But as Senator Ted Cruz of Texas just yesterday pointed out, they made three very deliberate decisions that put us exactly where we are right now. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have presided over the worst disaster at our southern border in our nation's history. This was not an accident. It was deliberate. It was the consequence of deliberate political decisions that have created this chaos. This crisis was caused by three political decisions made in the very first week of the presidency. Number one, Joe Biden immediately halted construction of the border wall. Number two, Biden reinstated the disastrous policy of catch and release. And number three, Biden pulled out of the incredibly successful Remain in Mexico agreement. The consequence of those political decisions was catastrophic. That is correct, and we're seeing it now. And again, you got this Alejandro Mayorkas, this this loser, this this individual who's never run anything, let alone uh, something like the Department of Homeland Security, and he's acting like this was this all, oh, who could have seen this coming? And the media, of course, playing along with it. Oh, what are we going to do about the crisis? What are we going to do about that? It's, it's a... It's by it's by design. All right, uh, we'll take more of your reaction to this as well. Eight seven seven three eight one three eight one one. There's more in the news, and and by the way, most of the show today is pretty good news. We're gonna have some fun, and we're gonna hear some things that are actually gonna make us feel a little bit better about where we are in this country in terms of where we're headed, what our hopes are, what our options are. And once again, the media getting caught in their lies. We're going to spend a lot of time on that. And Republicans in the House actually finally taking action, it appears, on the Hunter Biden and the Biden family corruption. We got a lot of that. But we really need to wrap up our conversation here about what's happening on the border. I mean, after all, it's Cinco de Mayo, isn't it? And we need, to, we need to focus on not just the disaster that's happening now, as you see even CNN and MSNBC down there showing you the tent cities and the, the human debris, the, the, the humanity and the humanitarian crisis that has been created by this administration. Even they are pointing at it, and even they are saying, oh, my gosh, on May 11th, it's going to get that much worse. But this is a solutions-oriented program here. Talk radio isn't just about complaining about what's going on and yelling about it. It's about saying, hey, this is how you fix it. We, the people, can demand these fixes. It's still our government. And the fix here is the easiest you'll ever see. No new laws needed. No new money needed. No new people hired. No new equipment. It's a really simple solution. Follow the law right now that exists. And spend the money that's already been allocated for the border. 877-381-3811. It's Larry O'Connor in for Mark Levin. Mark Levin. Now, I know you guys are worried. Federal Reserve staff said banking crises fallout could push the economy into recession this year. But you can do something about that. Learn how to protect the retirement you worked really hard for. I think a great way is to diversify with gold and specifically a gold IRA. That's right, physical gold in your IRA. My favorite gold IRA company is Augusta Precious Metals. You got to call these guys and learn how a gold IRA can help you. So if you've saved 100000 or more in a 401k or an IRA, call Augusta Precious Metals and get their ultimate guide to gold IRAs. Tell them Mark sent you, and they'll give you a free gold coin 
when you open a gold IRA. Call Augusta Precious Metals today, 877-4-GOLD-IRA. That's 877-4-GOLD-IRA. Consult your financial professionals before making investment decisions. Get risk disclosures at AugustaPreciousMetals.com. What a great company. here for over 38 years and I've never seen anything like this in El Paso. This is unsustainable. It's not normal. Please help us and enough with the politics of it. That's Claudia Rodriguez, a businesswoman in El Paso, Texas. And that was on MSNBC as they toured the human debris living on the streets in El Paso. These are people who've already surged over the border over the last several days. This is even before Title 42 gets lifted on May 11th. Ms. Rodriguez says, please help us enough with the politics of it. I would love to have, again, it's MSNBC. I mean, I just, I just sometimes I would just, I would just so love to go along with these reporters and say, yeah, could I ask a quick question? Could I, could I just jump in here for a minute? Who'd you vote for? Claudia Rodriguez, who'd you vote for? I'd love to know. She is a businesswoman, so maybe there's some hope, a businesswoman in Texas. But last I checked, the blue-red divide in El Paso, it ain't looking good for the red folks. That's what's happening on the border. And even MSNBC is pointing it out. How about Lloyd in Fort Lauderdale next up here on this Cinco de Mayo as we talk about, well, you know, listen, we're we're all part of the great Latin culture now with Cinco de Mayo and uh, an invasion of six and a half million people over the last two years, Lloyd. Yeah, I think you've got a great point there, and thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on and making that there. Yeah. At the the reason I called is you you raised an issue, and you said, uh, "What's the use of having a law if you don't execute? If you don't go ahead and follow it, you can make all the laws that you want." It rec- I, I recalled Article Two, Section Three. I'd ask you to pull it up with the United States Constitution, and it, it imposes a dual duty. It says the President of the United States shall faithfully execute, faithfully execute the laws of this country. There's no use in even talking about having a law if it's not going to be enforced. There's no use of talking about impeaching anyone, Mayorkas or any other clown, any other individual out there, if we're not going to faithfully execute the laws. So as you said, we do have the laws, but if we're not willing to follow them, then that. So I agree with you, and so many other people yeah. do too. Yes, yeah. yes, a lot of people are benefiting from this. Yes, people, a lot of people are making money from it. But other than making it a campaign issue, are the Republicans willing to declare an invasion and there's laws that can happen there are they willing to defund the executive branch which is the president who is refusing to faithfully execute mayorkas says he's executing but he's not faithfully executing the laws or are we just going to talk about it yeah lloyd it's excellent points all around and i can only tell you this and thank you for the call from from beautiful fort lauderdale I can only tell you this, you know, as a, as a radio host, I get to interview a lot of these people. And, and God knows with the new Republican Congress, uh, there's a whole lot of Republicans who just love doing media now. Right. And then they come on my program because it's a morning show in Washington, D.C. So they know they're going to get heard by a lot of people, a lot of people who work in cable news, a lot of people who work on Capitol Hill, a lot of the law firms in town. They love to, you know, have their names out there. And when they talk about my orcas they're I mean, without hesitation, no, oh, we got to impeach him. We got to impeach Mayorkas. Alejandro Mayorkas, he's, he's failed at his job. He's the worst secretary of Homeland Security ever. The border is a complete disaster. They'll even say, Lloyd, they'll even say, oh, it's an invasion. We're being invaded. Absolutely. And they say, we're going to impeach Mayorkas. Absolutely. It's a slam dunk. Mayorkas will be impeached. And then I would say, oh, well, I appreciate that, Congressman. Let me ask you something. Uh, if you just made the case to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas and it's a slam dunk and it's because of the disaster of our border policy and what the results are, can I ask you something? If Mayorkas is merely carrying out the wishes and demands of the president, then what's the argument against impeaching Biden, the man on top? And, uh, well, then I get a lot of hamana, 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 hamana. It's Larry O'Connor in for Mark Levin. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. 
Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. It's Larry O'Connor sitting in for Mark Levin. He's a little under the weather today, but uh, have no fear. You'll get your Mark Levin fix on Monday. And, of course, on Sunday, Life, Liberty, and Levin, Sunday at 8 p.m. on Fox News. This week's guest, this is going to be a blockbuster, Alan Dershowitz. So there you got two pretty good legal minds right there talking about the uh, the world around us, Alan Dershowitz and Mark Levin. But then he's got an interview with Yanmi Park. She, of course, is this defector from North Korea who's got an incredible story to tell. Uh, we we got to teach our children well about authoritarian and uh, Marxism and totalitarianism. And uh, these people need to be able to tell their stories. Uh, otherwise, we're just we're just we're just one generation away from it here. So that's Life, Liberty and Levin this Sunday, 8 p.m. I'm Larry O'Connor sitting in for Mark Levin. I'm the morning show host on WMAL, Washington, D.C. Talk radio behemoth. And uh, we had a lot of time there in our first hour talking about the border crisis, the border disaster, the disaster of this president's making. And it's appropriate because it's Cinco de Mayo. And, uh, you know, you do Mexican things on Cinco de Mayo. You know, I used to live in California. It turns out Cinco de Mayo is a complete and total made-up thing. You know, everyone likes to, uh, I don't give my wife flowers on Valentine's Day because it's a made-up holiday. Uh, which, by the way, guys, if your wife wants flowers on Valentine's Day, get her flowers on Valentine's Day. Get, please. Oh, but it's a Hallmark thing. Yes, so what? She wants flowers, get her flowers. But the same people who will say, oh, you know, Valentine's Day is a made-up holiday. They'll be out doing shots tonight on Cinco de Mayo. They'll be, oh, my gosh, they'll be, they'll be partying. They'll be eating their nachos. They'll be, they'll, be, they'll be driving through the Taco Bell drive-thru, run for the border. They'll be putting on the sombrero, wearing the fake mustache, screaming along at the top of their lungs with the mariachi band at the local restaurant. Ask, ask him, hey, what is Cinco de Mayo? Uh, I don't know. More tequila. I want you to hear some, uh, every once in a while, we, we complain about Republicans in the House and the Senate a lot, as well we should, unlike Democrats. You know, we actually, we actually, we have some standards, right? And uh, let's face it, a lot of these politicians, they are, oh, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for? Politicians which means they're ineffective. They're not very smart. They don't know what they're doing. This does not apply to Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana. He had in front of him earlier this week. I hope you've seen this. If you haven't, we, we need to break this down a bit. He had in front of him the Deputy Secretary of Energy. Now, this is not the dude who has a bald head and a mustache, wears lipstick, and steals uh, suitcases full of women's clothes that he then wears to red carpet events and get celebrated. He was also, by the way, a, a deputy secretary of some sorts in the Department of Energy. He had top secret clearance with, you know, information pertaining to our nuclear policies and nuclear waste policies, because only the best and brightest work for this president, who has returned all the norms to our government. Now, this is a different deputy secretary, and uh, the, you, you bring somebody in from the Energy Department, and you think they're going to talk about nuclear policy, they're going to talk about you know, oil, they're going to talk about gas, they're going to talk about coal, they're going to talk about keeping the lights on, they're going to talk about keeping gas affordable so you can drive your vehicles and we can have a consistent free-flowing economy with people being transported wherever they want to go without it costing an arm and a leg. That's what, back in my day, back in your day, back, I don't know, four years ago, that's what the Department of Energy was for. Now, the Department of Energy... Their sole aim is to ruin energy in this country, to make it unaffordable to buy gas, to make it impossible for the oil companies to, to drill for our own natural resources here in this country of natural gas and oil, to make it impossible for any state that relies on coal mining. Please forgive West Virginia. You're done. Thanks to Joe Biden. And n nuclear, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? They still believe that stupid Jane Fonda movie from the 70s. No, the entire purpose of the Department of Energy is to do away with the only kind of means of energy that we've known in this country for the last 100 years. No, the, the whole point of the Department of Energy is to get rid of all of those things and uh, put up a windmill. 
That's what the Biden Department of Energy is all about. I, by the way, I wish the Secretary of Education thought about education the same way the Secretary of Energy thinks about energy. You know, Secretary of Energy gets in there and said, all right, we've got a mandate. We're going we're gonna to ruin energy, and we're going to do away with all of the sources of energy. If only the Secretary of Education said, all right, we're going to do away with these public schools. That would be beautiful. So John Kennedy has this guy, Senator Kennedy, Louisiana, has this deputy secretary who is trying to make the case for the Green New Deal. Right. Again, no need to vote. We'll just institute these policies. We're going to convert our fleet of military vehicles to electric. And so we'll make sure that our enemies have enough charging stations out on the battlefield for us. We're going to convert every kind of public energy consumption that you can imagine to solar, wind and what they call clean burning electricity. And most politicians, even Republicans, are so terrified that they're going to be, oh, you're unscientific and you don't believe in climate change and you don't think that the world is exploding because of this. And Ted Turner was telling us about this with Captain Planet 20 years ago. Didn't you get the message? And they're so afraid of being called names by some idiot like Don Lemon. On Where is Don Lemon these days, by the way? Uh, that, they, that they go along with it and they think that they can't say anything. They think that they can't figure out any sort of way to challenge this narrative. And God bless Senator John Kennedy. In fact, we've got a couple of different audio bites here that we're going to be playing for you. That, that is a, a absolute textbook explanation of how you engage with somebody and talk about these issues without buying into their side of the argument. You all, you can never slip into their side of the way. And I know you have to deal with this on your Facebook page or on your wife's Facebook page because your kids don't allow you to have your own Facebook page. I get it. I know who you are. Uh, I know you have to deal with this, with the moron liberal from HR in your office or the idiot two cubicles down from you who just watches Rachel Maddow or listens to some NPR podcast. I know you have to deal with it on the sideline of your kid's soccer game when you're just trying to watch seven-year-olds chase a round ball around the field for an hour until you can finally go get a pizza and watch real football. I know you have to deal with this from these guys all the time, and you either just ignore it, you just shake your head, you just nod, you you don't want to get into it. Here's how you get into it. I'm going to give you the first example. This has to do with the, the whole global warming thing. And here's Kennedy addressing this whole $50 trillion expenditure to bring us down to what's called carbon neutral emissions by 2050. Now, recognize, of course, this would be unilateral. The United States only doing this. China ain't doing it. India ain't doing it. Third world countries ain't doing it. They're spewing carbon everywhere. But no, 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 we're going to spend $50 trillion of our dollars to get to carbon neutral by 2050. And John Kennedy, Kennedy doesn't say, oh, there's no such thing as global warming. Oh, there's no problem with carbon emissions. Oh, you guys just hate fossil fuel. Oh, you just want to kill the oil industry. I mean, all those things are true. See, he doesn't, he doesn't get down into the weeds like that. He asks the most simple, basic question, which is, by the way, something that these activists never expect these zealots these religious fanatics the climate issue the global warming issue the fossil fuel issue the the carbon emissions issue the clean energy issue it is their religion it is their faith they believe in it and so you don't argue with somebody over their religion. How are you going to make somebody believe, uh, stop believing in what they've decided is, is going to be their salvation? You ever tried to have that conversation? No. He's like, so Kennedy says, all right, I accept your premise. Let's say we spend that $50 trillion. And then here's how it went. If we spend $50 trillion dollars to become carbon neutral in the United States of America by 2050. You're the Deputy Secretary of Energy. Give me your estimate of how much that is going to reduce world temperatures. Now, that is the most reasonable and, frankly, the only question that should be asked about this. 
not, you know, where's the science to prove global warming and where's Al Gore's hockey stick graph? And, oh, you told me that the planet was going to implode 10 years ago and here we are still. And now Greta Thunberg is yelling at us and and they get lost in the weeds. And suddenly you become a cable news debate show. Right. And, And sadly, I think too many of these politicians, these congressmen, these senators, that's what they want to be. They really want to have a primetime cable news show. And so they try to engage in those conversations. They don't even know how to do it. They don't have the rhetorical skills to do it. They don't get it. But if you are a member of Congress and you're being told by this administration, by the executive branch, that you have to spend $50 trillion to get to carbon zero, otherwise the planet is going to explode. Well, then isn't this the obvious question to ask? And by the way, if you're representing the executive branch of government, if you're the deputy secretary of energy and you're stepping up, making this case under oath to the Senate that this money must be spent so we can get to carbon zero, shouldn't you have an answer to that basic question? If we do what you're demanding we do with $50 trillion, and you know, there was a time when $50 trillion was a lot of money, $50 trillion, then what will be the effect you keep saying carbon neutral, carbon neutral, carbon neutral. Well, but the reason that you're telling us we got to go carbon neutral is to keep the temperatures stable on this planet. So first question, how will this affect the temperatures on the planet? That's the question. Shouldn't you have an answer to that? So, so first of all, it's a net cost. Um, it's what uh, benefits we're having from getting our act together and reducing all of those climate benefits. We're I, seeing. Let me ask again. Maybe I'm being. Right now. Maybe I'm not being clear. If we spent fifty trillion dollars to become carbon neutral by two thousand and fifty in the United States of America, how how much is that going to reduce world temperatures? Now, if you're keeping score, that's the second time he's asked the same basic question. Now, the first attempt. This deputy secretary of energy, uh, he tried to distract and he tried to mansplain to John Kennedy. By the way, this is one of the things I love about Senator John Kennedy. He's got this great, deep Louisiana accent. And you know how people in D.C. are in the Northeast Corridor all the way up to Massachusetts. They think that anyone who talks like John Kennedy is a is a is a yokel, is a redneck, is is a country hick. John Kennedy is quite possibly the smartest man in the United States Senate. And that's saying something because Ted Cruz is a pretty smart guy. John Kennedy may, in fact, be the smartest man in the United States Senate. And and this guy tries to talk around it. He tries to mansplain. He says, well, let me just be clear. It's a 50 trillion net. And, it's like, and Kennedy's like, I am not asking you about that. I'm asking a very simple question. If we spend the money you say we got to spend, what will the result be? So there he was. He asked a second time. This is a global problem, so we need to reduce our emissions and we need to do everything we can. How much, if we do our part, countries. is it going to reduce So we're, per, we're 13 percent of global emissions. You don't know, right do you? You don't know, do you? You can do the math. We need to. You don't know, do you, Mr. Secretary? So we're 13 percent of if global If you know, emissions. why won't if you we tell went, me? If we went to zero, that would be 13 percent. You don't know, do you? You just want us to spend $50 trillion and you don't have the slightest idea whether it's going to reduce world temperatures. Now, I'm all for carbon neutrality, but you're the deputy secretary of the Department of Energy, and you're advocating we spend trillions of dollars to seek carbon neutrality, and you can't, and this isn't your money or my money, it's taxpayer money, and you can't tell me how much it's going to lower world temperatures? There- or you won't tell me? You know, but you won't? In my heart of hearts, there is no way the world gets its act together on climate change unless the U.S. leads. Tell me how much it's the going US to reduce. You, can, you can't tell me. Nope. He sure can't tell him. And that is beautiful. And he's left as a babbling idiot. So now, listen, obviously, you're not going to be in the position on your kid's soccer field during a, a game or on your Facebook page or uh, with your your HR associate there at your work place to engage in this specific conversation but let me give you a a suggestion when they start talking about global warming and carbon emissions and clean energy and how republicans are neanderthals who are going to get us all killed try this try this ask this question and i want to give a hat hat tip to my friend chris plant a uh, syndicated talk show host he's great he's also based out of wmal here in washington dc I, I i first heard this from him he may have stolen it from said we all steal things uh here's the question I, i'm i'm willing to go along with you on this whole global warming thing and the climate change whatever you're calling it these days 
I'm, I'm willing because I'm not a scientist. I don't know these things, right? And I, we're supposed to trust the science. Let me ask you something. As you look at all the science, as you look at these graphs and, and Al Gore's hockey stick and his uh, chakra and whatever the heck he's got going on there, when you look at all this and when you study it, when you di- dig deep, you must have got the answer to this question. So please, you can tell me, what is the optimal temperature for the planet Earth? You say we're warming. And that's causing the seas to rise, and it's causing hurricanes, and it's causing earthquakes, and it's causing everything. Snow. It ca- it's funny how it causes everything, right? You keep telling me it's warming. Warming from what? What temperature is the planet supposed to be? Now, they'll never answer that question. And in a moment, I'll tell you why. It's Larry O'Connor in for the great one, Mark Levin. Mark Levin. Don't fall for the free phone deals from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, folks. Just another trick to lock you into a long-term contract that's going to cost you a fortune every single month. Instead, get a brand new iPhone 12 from Pure Talk for just 12 bucks a month at 0% interest, no contract. Cancel or leave anytime. Get a new iPhone, ultra-fast 5G service, and cut your cell phone bill in half. That's why I'm a Pure Talk customer. That's why you should be, too. You can switch right now at puretalk.com in as little as 10 minutes. Choose from a variety of unlimited talk and text plans starting at 30 bucks a month with plenty of high-speed data, all backed by a 100% money-back guarantee. Go to puretalk.com, enter promo code Levin Podcast, L-E-V-I-N Podcast, and you'll save 50% off your first month. An iPhone 12 for 12 bucks a month and save on your monthly bill. PureTalk.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Restrictions apply. You can see the site for details. If we spend $50 trillion to become carbon neutral in the United States of America by 2050, you're the Deputy Secretary of Energy. Give me your estimate of how much that is going to reduce world temperatures. Can't answer it, won't answer it, because they don't know it's all speculation. They certainly don't want to be held to any facts or data or any sort of tool to measure results. No, we don't want that. That's for the private sector. We're in the government. We're just trying our hardest. That's all that matters. It brings us back to this other question here. Okay, fine. You think the planet is warming. What temperature is the planet supposed to be? They won't answer that question. There is no answer to that question, by the way. But any answer they give you, you can then look at historical records and say, okay, well, here we are like 300 years ago. It was warmer than that. Was that because of fossil fuel and the internal combustion engine? Or was that that because of so many cows tooting out in the fields? Uh, and, And also, how did we survive a thousand years ago when temperatures were warmer than that? It's because this whole cult this religious fanaticism around the climate and around this idea that we human beings are affecting and can fix the problem it's narcissism it's all narcissism the planet needs to be the temperature that i'm used to and that i grew up with larry o'connor in for mark Levin. Don't fall for the free phone deals from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, folks. Just another trick to lock you into a long-term contract that's going to cost you a fortune every single month. Instead, get a brand new iPhone 12 from Pure Talk for just 12 bucks a month at 0% interest, no contract. Cancel or leave anytime. Get a new iPhone, ultra-fast 5G service, and cut your cell phone bill in half. That's why I'm a Pure Talk customer. That's why you should be, too. You can switch right now at puretalk.com in as little as 10 minutes. Choose from a variety of unlimited talk and text plans starting at 30 bucks a month with plenty of high-speed data, all backed by a 100% money-back guarantee. Go to puretalk.com, enter promo code Levin Podcast, L-E-V-I-N Podcast, and you'll save 50% off your first month. An iPhone 12 for 12 bucks a month and save on your monthly bill. PureTalk.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Restrictions apply. You can see the site for details. Right versus left is right versus wrong. Call Mark at 877 381 3811. 
It's Larry O'Connor in for Mark Levin here on the Mark Levin program. Mark will be back on Monday. He's feeling a little under the weather today. And don't miss Life, Liberty, and Levin this Sunday, 8 p.m. Fox News Channel. I know you won't miss it, but I just want to remind you, because seriously, not, not only are you not going to miss it, you got to tell your friends about it. Alan Dershowitz and Mark Levin go one-on-one. And then Yanmi Park, she is that North Korean defector who, make your kids watch this. As they, as they dabble with Marx, say, you know, Karl Marx made some really good points. You know, socialism has never really been tried. Well, actually, you know, it's been tried quite a bit in North Korea. They're still, they don't have to try, they're doing it. It's happening. Take a listen to Yanmi Park. And then we'll see how your kids are doing with that whole, Karl Marx had some good points. I am Larry O'Connor. Uh, apparently, I, earlier in the program, I mentioned that we would uh, not really be talking about the coronation of King Charles tomorrow, uh, other than the fact that I'm still astounded that uh, Camilla Parker Bowles has somehow uh, transformed herself from the uh, husband-stealing other woman trollop bag into literally the Queen of England. I mean, th- there's a chance for all of us. I thought America was the land of opportunity. But apparently by pointing that out, I was uh, being uh, undiplomatic and unkind to our friends across the pod. So <laughs> I, I sincerely apologize if I hurt anybody's feelings. But let's be clear. Anything that I might say about the coronation and uh, the <clears throat> Queen of England uh, is nothing compared to how offensive the outfit Jill Biden is wearing. So Jill Biden, who holds no actual official political position in our country. <clears throat> She is. I was. I was going to compare her track record with Camilla, but I won't go there. Uh, Jill Biden, not an elected official, not a cabinet position, not a senator, not a vice president. Normally, this would be a vice president thing, right? Isn't that what you're supposed to send a vice president to? Right? State funerals, weddings, coronations. But that said, this is, I mean, Trump said this yesterday. He said, this is incredibly disrespectful and unacceptable that Biden is not going. It it only happens every 70 years. Although, to be fair, let's face it, I don't think Charles is going to last 70 years. Uh, But they sent Jill. And and I recognize I was probably offensive in referring to the uh, once and future Queen of England as a a husband sealing other woman hoe bag. But... You should see what Jill Biden is wearing, the outfit. That how does this happen? How does this pass through protocol? My God, what a downgrade we've had in first ladies in just one election. Well, you talk about elections mattering. Yeah, yeah, it matters for the judiciary and the Supreme Court and all that. But look at the first lady. We've gone from literally a cover model, an international fashion icon in Melania Trump, to good lord i mean listen obviously it's hard to compare jill biden to a internationally famous gorgeous model okay so that and i'm not expecting that obviously not every first lady is going to be able to be a model like melania trump but ladies i i I, you work with what you got right and you make the most of what you got she is wearing this outfit there she is standing next to the future queen of england uh princess kate and she is wearing what can only be described as leftover upholstery from a sofa that you would have seen uh, in uh, uh, Mama's family on the old Carol Burnett show. This is atrocious. What's with the giant floral prints? Let's add the only floral prints at this affair should be Prince Andrew. Or was it Edward that that rumor was about? There's a lot of rumors about the princes. Anyway, there you go. My Me offending the royal family has now been usurped by this offensive outfit from Jill Biden. Good God, this is embarrassing. I can't wait to see where they sit her at, uh, at Westminster Abbey. Uh, that said, if you're waking up to watch the coronation tomorrow, we'd love to hear from you. No, actually, I would not like to hear from you. I don't, I don't want to have a conversation with anybody who is waking up early to watch the coronation. You know what they're doing here in Washington at Mount Vernon, the home of our greatest living American. Well, he's not living anymore, but the greatest American, uh, George Washington. 
they are having Revolutionary Weekend. It was a coincidence that this occurred at the same time. But on the day that the Brits are crowning their new king, you go to Mount Vernon in Virginia at George Washington's home, and they're going to be doing Revolutionary War reenactments. They've got reenactors living in tents out on the big front lawn there. They got the whole fife and drum thing going. They're going to reenact a couple of battles, and the Redcoats are not going to fare well. On, on the day that they are crowning King Charles over in London, here at Mount Vernon in Virginia, we're going to be killing Redcoats with our muskets. God, I love this country. Uh, to pick up on the good times from Senator John Kennedy there that we just heard, the great exchange with the Deputy Secretary of Energy about carbon emissions, I want to give a, a great credit to a guy. I've never met Tim Poole. Uh, he he is one of these uh, YouTube podcasters. He does a live stream. I think it's nightly or four nights a week. He's based out of Western Maryland, Harper's Ferry, West Virginia border area out there. Um, my friend uh, Kurt Schlichter has gone on that show before. James Rosen, the longtime White House reporter, he worked for Newsmax. Now he's got a great book about Anton Scalia. He was just on the Tim Pool show earlier this week. I, I don't consider it competition for what Mark Levin does here, so I don't mind pointing this out. Let's face it, Mark Levin has no com competition. And one of the great things I love about Mark Levin, unlike other radio hosts, he'll go ahead and give credit to anybody out there. He's so generous. And I'm sure he would appreciate this exchange. Tim Pool who does this live stream on YouTube. He's uh, having this exchange. I think this guy's from Canada. He is a Marxist. He is, and, and the conversation turns to abortion. And so again, you know, I mean, what is the one thing we're never supposed to argue about in American politics? Abortion, right? Oh no, you can't do that. You can't talk to people about abortion. And what happens is, if those of us who are against abortion refuse or we're told that we're not supposed to talk about such things in polite company, then only one side wins the argument because no one ever engages. This is the same thing with the transgender issue right now in this country that we're going to get to a little bit later. They're, they are counting on our decorum. They're counting on our good taste. They're counting on our good behavior. They're counting on our decency our basic human decency we conservatives we you know we recognize that you know well you don't want a kid to hear about the details of what happens during an abortion so so let's just not talk about it and of course then the whole procedure is done behind closed doors in the shadows and you just talk about it in euphemisms you know reproductive health care choice right uh the a woman should have the right to do whatever she wants to her own body who would argue with that right and when you don't talk about what's actually happening when you seed the argument and allow the left to define the language, define the narrative, and define the terms of the argument, well, of course they're going to win. And so our basic humanity, our indecency, keeps us on the sidelines of these discussions. Now, now that changed about two decades ago when we finally figured that out and we started saying, you know what, you keep calling it third trimester abortion. Let's call it what it is, partial birth abortion. And people said, whoa, 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 what are you talking about? What, what, is, what is that? Partial birth? Partial? What is that? And conservatives started actually describing in medical detail, reading right from the books, what happens during one of these procedures. And, well, look at that. Lo and behold, the Senate voted to outlaw partial birth abortion. And that's how you shift a narrative. Now, that's exactly what has to be done with the, the so-called gender-affirming care. And, and like I said, we're going to get into that in a moment. But I want you to hear this exchange. Again, this guy's name is Tim Poole. And this is a conversation. He's got a little round table there where they do this, you know, YouTube podcast. And here's the socialist pro-abortion guy towing the same line, spouting the same old talking points from 1974. I think a woman should be able to do whatever she wants with her body. Who would argue with that? Well, I don't think anything is acceptable, but I think the mother should still have the choice ultimate uh, authority over what happens to her body but well, there's wait, a wait, child wait, inside wait, her hold body on, hold on, hold on. not what her about meth uh like should she be allowed to do meth yeah uh i think if someone is doing meth while they're pregnant that it is completely acceptable for something like uh i don't know what the name of the service is in the united states child for, services, I guess child ECFS child services. Would be, oh, yeah. oh, it's her body though yeah it's her body if she wants to do meth what's the big deal uh, the big deal is that it's, she's intentionally trying to kill a child. Hold on there a minute. Yeah, I, I see where we're going. I don't, I don't. <laughs> Can I just tell you, 
the the deer in the headlights look from this guy when he realizes what he just said. Ah, yeah. Well, the difference here is that if she's doing meth while she's pregnant, she's intentionally trying to kill her baby. And Tim, Tim Poole, I got, I've never met this guy. I know my, my buddy Kurt Schlichter's been out there a couple of times. Um, and Amber Athey, my pal Amber Athey has done this show a couple of times. I got, I, I'd love to meet him sometime because his, his response. Ah, the difference is this woman's intentionally trying to kill her own baby. And Tim Poole just says, hold on a minute there. Services in the United States? Child or, services? I guess child ECFS child services? would be... Oh, yeah. well, it's her body, though. Yeah, it's her body. If she wants to do meth, what's the big deal? Uh, the big deal is that it's, she's intentionally trying to kill a child. Hold on there a minute. <laughs> Hold on there a minute. And then, and then the pro-abortion guy literally says, Oh, I see what you're saying here. Oh, I see what you did there. Oh, I see the trap that you laid there, but it's not even a trap. I love it. They always say, oh, that was a trap. It wasn't a trap. It's logic. Logic to the left is a trap. Put that on the coffee mug. We've been trying to figure out what to put on my coffee mug. We saw a coffee mug at my store. There it is. Does that, every, every talk show host has a catchphrase, right? Uh, with Mark Levin. Get off my phone, you idiot. Right? A dummy. Sorry. Um, logic to the left is a trap that's all this was this wasn't a trap it was just the logical extension of the argument that they're making in the united states child or, services, I guess child ECFS child services? would be oh, yeah. well, it's her body though yeah it's her body if she wants to do meth what's the big deal uh the big deal is that it's she's intentionally trying to kill a child hold on there a minute yeah and i see where we're going I See, it's, it's moments like that are absolutely beautiful, and, and you can learn from this. You see, I guess the reason why I play this not only is to give credit where it's due, and, and maybe you haven't seen that because it is kind of a different demographic that watches these YouTube uh, podcasts, although it's wildly popular, uh, Tim Pool's show is. Uh, the reason I play it for you is that you can learn from that, that these conversations should be had. They can be had, and you can actually lead people to a, a different place. I, I, a quick story. Um, I once engaged in a very similar conversation. It was actually at the, the Democratic National Convention. Now, this is when I was working for Andrew Breitbart. Um, it, technically, Andrew had just passed away a couple of months before. Andrew died on March 1st, 2012. We were at the DNC in Charlotte. This was the renomination of Barack Obama. And for Breitbart, uh, we were doing uh, streaming interviews from the radio row there. There weren't a whole lot of conservative talk shows there not a lot and this was early day. i mean i know that daily wire and daily signal and daily caller and daily everything and and all of these sites and the site i work for now town hall and all the town hall sites red we, we all do streaming shows and and we go to these media rows now they call it media row now they used to just call it radio row and we do these streaming shows it, it's pretty normal back then breitbart was pretty much the only one the only internet based company andrew was such a visionary we were the only internet-based company, non-radio company, that was sitting there. We set up our our position there at the at the radio row, and we were interviewing people, and we were interviewing Democrats. It's like because everybody went to Tampa that year for the Republican convention for the nomination of Mitt Romney, and uh, when and Andrew said, "Well, we're going to Charlotte for the Democrats," and some of the people in the country said, "Why are we going there?" And he said, and Andrew's like, "Oh my God, it's going to be way more interesting." to uh, to talk to the democrats because we get them on the record saying you know the, when a democrat actually when a liberal supports their position th that's the best thing when they actually explain their position and try to try to try to explain and defend their indefensible positions that's gold just like this moment here so i was interviewing a woman i think she worked for planned parenthood or she was a a, a pro-abortion activist and in the course of the conversation, I said, let me ask you something. If a woman is is seven months pregnant and her abusive husband beats her up and kills her and the baby dies, do you consider that a double homicide? And she says, absolutely, that's right. Absolutely, it would be. Yes. And I said, okay, if that same woman was seven months pregnant, she was driving to a doctor's office and a drunk driver, a dude driving a pickup, he's had too many six packs and he plows through an intersection and he, and he slams into this woman and she dies and the baby dies as she was on the way to the doctor's office. Would that be a double murder? And she said, yes, absolutely. Drunk driver, vehicular homicide. Absolutely. That's a double murder. I said, okay, what if she was driving to a Planned Parenthood clinic and her face it was the first time she thought about it. 
It was the first time she realized that the entire value of that unborn child was completely assigned by pro-abortion people to the whims of the mother, uh, the whims of the woman who was carrying the baby. And if she was going to a doctor's office for a checkup, no problem. That baby is a legitimate baby that deserves to live. If she's going to Planned Parenthood to get an abortion, that baby is meaningless. It's just a clump of cells. And it was at that moment I saw in her eyes that for the first time she thought about this issue. This is what we need to do. It's Larry O'Connor in for Mark Levin. Mark Levin. Don't fall for the free phone deals from Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile, folks. Just another trick to lock you into a long-term contract that's going to cost you a fortune every single month. Instead, get a brand new iPhone 12 from Pure Talk for just 12 bucks a month at 0% interest, no contract. Cancel or leave anytime. Get a new iPhone, ultra-fast 5G service, and cut your cell phone bill in half. That's why I'm a Pure Talk customer. That's why you should be, too. You can switch right now at puretalk.com in as little as 10 minutes. Choose from a variety of unlimited talk and text plans starting at 30 bucks a month with plenty of high-speed data, all backed by a 100% money-back guarantee. Go to puretalk.com, enter promo code Levin Podcast, L-E-V-I-N Podcast, and you'll save 50% off your first month. An iPhone 12 for 12 bucks a month and save on your monthly bill. PureTalk.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Restrictions apply. You can see the site for details. It's Larry O'Connor in tonight for Mark Levin. A little under the weather, but he'll be back on Monday. And I want to remind you again, Life, Liberty, and Levin, Sunday, 8 p.m. Alan Dershowitz and Yanmi Park will be there. Um, I do want to get to your calls. Uh, this great audio of uh, Senator John Kennedy. Uh, let's uh, Kathleen in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Scranton. Wow. Oh, Joe Biden from Scranton. He's your hometown boy. Last I checked, Pennsylvania, actually, uh, your economy is pretty reliant on those fossil fuels that the Department of Energy wants to get rid of. What do you think of your senator from Louisiana taking him to task? I loved it. I loved it when he asked uh, the Depar- Deputy Assistant Department of Energy whether or not she knew where cobalt, lithium, and all, yeah. all the ingredients to these batteries came from, and she didn't know. And yeah. he said, China, China, right. on That's each right. one of them. You are, you are sitting in, in, in central Pennsylvania on natural gas that God has granted to this planet uh, that we could live off of, we can use, we can power our vehicles off of, we can cook if they aren't banning our gas stoves, and we'll get to that a little bit later, Kathleen. And instead, they want to stop all of that, and they want to use all the things that would make us even more reliant on China. Because it's not bad enough that we were reliant on Iran and Saudi Arabia and Russia for oil. Now they want to make us reliant on China for batteries. And not only that, maybe that's a kickback to China for all the money that they gave Joe Biden. And, and we, here we gave him an expressway. We gave him a road because he said he's from Scranton. But he's only was here until he was 10 years old. Oh, you must love driving down Biden Highway there, Kathleen, in beautiful Scranton, Pennsylvania. Listen, thanks for the call. Thanks for checking in here on the Mark Levin Show. We're going to get to that Biden family corruption and more coming up in just a moment. It's Larry O'Connor in for Mark Levin. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. It's Larry O'Connor filling in for the great one, Mark Levin, who is under the weather today. But have no fear, uh, you'll get your fix of Mark Levin, 8 p.m., on Sunday, Fox News Channel Life, Liberty, and Levin. It's a must-watch, especially this week. It'll be Levin one-on-one with Alan Dershowitz. Boy, uh, uh, hey, Siri, can you put two great legal minds on my television for me, please? You betcha. Here's Sunday at 8, Life, Liberty, and Levin. You got Mark, you got Alan Dershowitz. Then, an interview with Yanmi Park. She is the defector from North Korea who's got a harrowing story. All of your kids who uh, 
still think that socialism is really just an idea that hasn't hasn't had a fair shake yet. Have them watch this so they can see what it looks like when socialism gets a fair shake in North Korea. That's coming up at 8 p.m. I'm Larry O'Connor. I'm the morning show host, along with my uh, pals Julie Gunlock and Patrice Anwuka, every morning on WMAL in Washington, D.C. That's Mark's home station when he's in Washington. And uh, it's a fine, fine talk station. The radio that you're listening to right now, that's a fine station as well. If it's got Levin, it's got to be good. Uh, thanks for letting me be a part of your Friday evening here as we wind things down and head into the weekend. Uh, where to start? Where to start? Uh, Rochelle Walensky. Now, she is the head of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and she has officially resigned today. Said the waning of the COVID-19 pandemic is a good time to make the transition. Uh, which pharmaceutical company do you think she's going to sit on the board of there? Just curious. Rochelle Walensky, I, I am I'm sort of torn about Rochelle Walensky's legacy. I got to tell you, I had high hopes for Rochelle Walensky when she became the CDC director. I'm not kidding. Uh, you may not remember this. But when Rochelle Walensky was first named the director of the CDC in the very first days of the uh, Biden administration, she was asked specifically about getting schools open. You remember this January 21? Some states already had their schools open. CDC was standing in the way because of the teachers union and the powerful Randy Weingarten, because they, you know, remember the demands the teachers union had? No, uh, we want the schools to be open. But first, you've got to uh, defund the police and y you've got to make Medicare for all and have socialized medicine. We can't have the schools open until that happens. Well, I want to remind you what Rochelle Walensky said. This is, by the way, uh, just so you have the visual, she is speaking on a Zoom call at the offices of the CDC with the CDC banner and logo behind her. I also want to be clear that there is increasing uh, data to suggest that schools can safely reopen and that that safe reopening does not um, uh, suggest that teachers need to be vaccinated in order to reopen safely. Wow. Remember that? Do you remember? Of course you don't remember that. That was Rochelle Walensky. Director of the CDC in the first days of the Biden administration saying we've got data that shows we can open schools. Frankly, we've got data that shows the schools should never have closed in the first place. But she went so far as to say we have data that shows that we can open the schools, we can open them safely, and teachers don't have to be vaccinated. The very next day. At the White House briefing, a reporter asked Jen Psaki about that. Why is the White House holding up opening the schools? Your director of the CDC just said that you can do it safely and teachers don't have to be vaccinated. Here was Jen Psaki's response. The president, uh, let me be crystal clear, wants schools to open. He wants them to stay open. Um, and that is and he wants to do that safely. And he wants health and medical experts to be the guides for uh, how we should do exactly that. So we're just not she uh, the, the uh, Dr. Walensky um, spoke to this uh, in her personal capacity. Obviously, she's the head of the CDC, but we're going to. She spoke in her personal capacity. She was on a Zoom call on behalf of the CDC with the CDC banner and logo behind her in her personal. Yeah, she was, you know, she's just attended this this Zoom call about school opening policies as a private citizen. She took off that hat. You know, it's a very elaborate hat they wear when they're director of the CDC. It's like a fez. It's got multiple tassels hanging down from it. They were thinking of calling the head of the CDC the Grand Poobah. When you put the fez on and maybe even a sash of some kind but she wasn't wearing the fez she wasn't speaking ex cathedra so she was just speaking as a private citizen because you know who among us wants to just you know shoot the you know what with rochelle walensky outside of her official capacity listen it was at that moment when she got the message and what her job really was and her job was to do the political bidding of the white house and that's exactly what she did. She was so obedient. She she sat up when she was supposed to sat up. She rolled over when she was supposed to roll over. 
She never looked at data again. Marty McCary, he's a public health policy professional expert coming out of Johns Hopkins University. He's been an outspoken critic of this administration. He even said on Twitter earlier today, Rochelle Walensky, before she went to the CDC, was known as a very kind, collegial, and smart person. But then she got the message. Then she said, uh, Marty McCary says, walensky has been obediently supportive of all Biden COVID policies, often with flawed research, non-disclosure of critical data on things like the breakdown of child deaths for healthy kids versus those with medical conditions, deaths from COVID versus deaths with an incidental COVID test, hospitalization rates among boosted people under 50 years old versus those with primary vaccine series alone. Her agency has also worked to censor others as the CDC put out misinformation on myocarditis, long COVID, masking toddlers, boosters in young people, and school closures. She's been a disaster. She's been the poster child for the Biden administration. Politics before everything. Reward your friends punish your enemies and if parents and children get lost in the mix if people lose their jobs because they have a religious objection or or a health objection to the vaccine well you're just roadkill we've got a election to win damn it she's the perfect representative of this administration I, I, let me ask you something because we always hear that oh well there is a religious exemption there's a religious exemption on the vaccine mandate i know a handful of people who applied for a religious exemption. A couple of them work in the government. A couple of them work in the private sector. They were all denied. Do you know anybody who was who was granted a religious exemption on the vaccine? Especially the government. I, I loved when the military, the military had a religious exemption and, and thousands, thousands of service members applied for the religious exemption. The vast, I, I believe maybe there were like five that were allowed. The vast, vast, vast majority of people applying for religious exemptions in the military were denied. Think about this for a minute. You've got the U.S. government telling an individual that their religious beliefs are invalid. Oh, you may have a religious exemption, but we, the government, we say that it doesn't count. Think about that for a minute. My friend uh, Chris Palumbi, he is a... A former U.S. Capitol Police officer, and now he was a politician. He ran for office against Steny Hoyer in Maryland. He's a Republican. He uh, he lays it out pretty well. Walensky's legacy. You want to know what Rochelle Walensky's legacy is at the CDC? Deny natural immunity. Just pretend natural immunity doesn't exist. Did you realize right now that if you had a, a case of COVID versus somebody who has been double boosted and four t- uh, double sh- double vaxxed and four times boosted your natural immunity from covid is stronger than the person who's gotten four booster shots in fact data now shows and i this isn't me talking listen i'm not a doctor you're getting health advice from me you're getting health advice from me you will be dead do not take health advice from me I'm a radio host but I interviewed doctors. I interviewed Dr. Marty McCary, who I just quoted from Johns Hopkins. Now, he knows something. He is a medical professional. He is a, a doctor. He works at Johns Hopkins specifically in health, public health policy and uh, immune issues, immunity issues. I asked him right now, if somebody is boosted, because everybody I know that's gotten COVID for the second and third time, you know people who have gotten COVID second, third time? I, 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 again, off the top of my head, I would say 98% of the people that I know who have gotten COVID a second or third time are people who have been regularly boosted all along the way. Now, I got I got the original vaccination. I got the first shot, the second shot, the the, the first two shot vax. I'll I'll admit it. I believed the hype. I got the first two shots and about oh, I wanted what was it? Uh, about a year later, I got COVID. And since then nothing all the people around me, all the people that I work with closely or or interact with, family members even, who have gotten COVID a second and third time, they've all been boosted. I haven't gotten a booster. They've all been boosted. Now, that's anecdotal. I get it. But I use that anecdotal experience to ask the doctor, well, why is it I keep hearing, I keep hearing the people who are getting COVID again and again and again are also people who got the boosters? 
on a regular basis. You know, they're up to their fourth booster and they're getting COVID. What is that all about? And the doctor says, he said, there's actually data showing now that about two, three months after you get the booster, you are actually more susceptible than had you not gotten the booster at all. This is Rochelle Walensky's legacy. What, what do you think it's going to be? Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson? Which, which company is she going to end up on the board of? What kind of golden parachute is she going to get for doing her job? For, for not doing her job, actually, for following orders and doing the job that she was told to do. Here's the, back to Chris Palumbi's great tweet here. Uh, deny natural immunity. Number two, claim the shots prevent the spread. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Oh, you may not want to get the shot for yourself, but look how selfish you are. Because if you don't get the shot, you're going to get somebody else sick. The shot did not prevent you from getting sick. And the shot did not prevent you from spreading. And that's exactly what they told us. Number three, suppress possible other therapies and alternative therapies. They had one message coming out of the CDC under Rochelle Walensky. Vaccine, 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 vaccine. That was it. Push for mandates everywhere. Uh, treated all groups as the same risk. That I'll never forgive them for. Oh, yeah. Oh, but this is what they did during the AIDS scare in the 90s as well, the HIV scare. Everybody has the same equal risk of contracting the disease. Everybody has the same equal risk of catching AIDS. I remember at that time, I was a young man in the 90s. I went and got and did, you know, not to reveal too much, but if you were a young man dating in the 90s, it was sort of expected that you had an HIV test done. They, 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 most, most, most young ladies, eventually, if the conversation turns to that, would, would, would say, well, have you been tested? That was, that was the reality of the 90s. Don't blame me. It was 30 years ago. And I remember going to get my HIV test. And the doctor said, so I'm looking at your chart here, and um, you're not a drug user, and your sexual partners are women. Why are you here? And I said, well, you know, I mean, anybody can get it, right? Everybody's in the same risk. And he's like, no, they're not. <laughs> if you're not an IV drug user, and if you're, you know, not very promiscuous, and especially if you're engaged in straight sex, yeah, you're okay. But this is what they do. This is what they do. They scare you and make it, everybody is equally in danger. And it was, a, it, was, it was criminal what they did during COVID. S terrifying 17 year old athletic young men and women in high school terrified that if they go out without a mask or without getting shot that they're gonna they're gonna get sick or they're gonna kill their parents or their grandparents if they visit them uh lying to congress fabricating studies uh that rounds out the list of rochelle walensky's great fabulous incredible track record and legacy well done you but I'll never forget that moment. That was that was when we all knew exactly who she worked for. When she first in, in she was speaking as a private citizen, Rochelle Walensky, as the CDC director speaking specifically about school closures. Boy, this is a video that's been lost to the archives, isn't it? I want you to hear it one more time, especially considering the debates that are going on right now. You all lived through this. You know exactly who was on the side of opening schools and who was on the side of closing them. And here was Rochelle Walensky, her first week on the job. I want to be clear that there is increasing uh, data to suggest that schools can safely reopen and that that safe reopening does not um, uh, suggest that teachers need to be vaccinated in order to reopen safely. Yeah. And uh, for most schools in blue states, blue cities, schools, states, jurisdictions dominated by Democrats, that was February 5th, 2021, two weeks into the Biden administration. In most of those jurisdictions, schools didn't open for another year after that. And even then. Part-time school, social distancing, desks 10 feet apart, kids wearing masks. And sometimes the teachers were still allowed to stay home. They stuck up a computer monitor on the desk. I mean, I assume they were home. They could have been in Tahiti. It's Larry O'Connor in for the great one, Mark Levin. Mark Levin.
Yeah, Rochelle Walensky announcing your retirement today from the CDC. Because, you know, everything's fine now. COVID's over, you know, until we have to win the next election. Don't forget, though, again, just two weeks into the new administration, she said this. I also want to be clear that there is increasing uh, data to suggest that schools can safely reopen and that that safe reopening does not um, uh, suggest that teachers need to be vaccinated in order to reopen safely. So the next day, Jen Psaki is asked about that. Well, that's at odds with the White House's position. What's going on here? So we're just not. She, uh, the the uh, Dr. Walensky um, spoke to this uh, in her personal capacity. Obviously, she's the head of the CDC, but we're going to wait for the final guidance to come out. So- Do the wait for the final guidance. She was speaking in her personal capacity, and of course, not one of the reporters in that room said. Okay, so she was speaking in her personal capacity, but she said the data shows that it's safe. So whether she's speaking in her personal capacity or speaking as the director of the CDC, that doesn't change the fact that we can safely open. What does it matter whether she's speaking in her personal capacity? By the way, she's the director of the CDC. Who cares? Why is she speaking in a personal capacity? There's no such thing as speaking in your personal capacity. It's either true that it's safe to reopen or it's not true. To say to you, but, oh, but the reporter's like, oh, oh, she was speaking in her personal capacity. Oh, well, all right then. That changes everything. Does it? All right, coming up, there will be no democracy in the Democratic Party. Not this year. And they're admitting it. Then we'll play the tape for you next. The new American Revolution starts here. The Mark Levin Show. Call in at 877-381-3811. It's Larry O'Connor in for Mark Levin tonight. And it's an honor to do this. I'm not going to promote him myself. I keep telling you how I'm the radio host, the morning show host on WMAL. On O'Connor and Company. I, I have a TV show. It's on Salem News Channel every night, 9 p.m. You can stream it. Get it on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, however you stream shows. You can go to SalemNewsChannel.com and get it. And uh, and all and the videos are all up at YouTube. Just search for Larry O'Connor on YouTube and you'll see it. Uh, it's it's worth it. It's fun. It's good stuff. You'll like it. Why not? You know what? I, my, my understanding is that a lot of you probably had a, a favorite primetime TV show that uh, just got ripped off the air. You're not seeing it. And it's not there. So, you know, there's alternatives, right? Why not? I don't know who this person is. They're uh, on Twitter. Uh, it says Rhonda Lee, Iowa. The actual Twitter handle is MAGA for Justice, the number four, MAGA for Justice. So, you know, but, but listen, if you follow it and there's some like offensive memes or something, don't come yelling at me. OK, you're a grown up. I don't know. I'm, I'm recommending it just because of this one thing this person does. I don't know who they are, but they are brilliant at it. They get a picture of of the first lady, Jill Biden. Uh, wearing one of these god-awful dresses. I, I mentioned it yesterday, or, or earlier. Uh, they released a picture of her. She's representing our country at the coronation of King Charles. And she's wearing this dress with the Princess Kate Middleton. And this dress, it, it's it's uncanny. Every It always looks like the upholstery from a sofa from the 70s. And I don't know who this person is at MAGA for Justice, but they somehow... Find the sofa that almost identically matches the clothes that the first lady is wearing. And boy, oh boy, have they done it again. I just tweeted it in my Twitter account. It's Larry O'Connor. And there she is wearing wearing the uh, uh, sofa upholstery. And there's the sofa. And I got to say, I mean, in this case, it looks better on the sofa. I just say it. It looks like a sleeper bed. I like those. The little... Little sleepers. The, the, what was it in New York? Jennifer Convertibles, I think it was. Oh, wait, they're not paying us any money for that. There, you got a freebie, Jennifer Convertibles. Oh, well done, whoever that is at Mega for Justice. They always, and, and if you scroll through the Twitter account, you will see just time and time again, whatever, <laughs> whatever Jill Biden is wearing, there is a matching sofa. I don't, it's amazing how they search and find this. So there you go. That's your first lady representing our nation at the once every 70 years coronation of King Charles. All right. There will be no democracy in the Democratic Party. Uh, Not this year. Not no how. Not no way. The president is uh, polling nationally uh, with dismal numbers. Americans want something else. Hopefully they'll pick a Republican. 
any Republican, and I mean any Republican running for office right now, is a better choice than Joe Biden. Okay, all of you, you know, only Trumps or only DeSantis or, I mean, I don't know, are there any only Nikki's out there? I guess, I guess Nikki's extended family, perhaps. And I'm especially talking to you only Aces. You know what, if, if, you're, if you're an only Asa, if you've caught Asa fever so much that you will only accept Asa Hutchinson as the Republican nominee... That's the new thing. It's not never Trump anymore. It's only Trump, only DeSantis, only Asa. Uh, come on, grow up, grow up. Yes, I have. Uh, I recognize that it's a primary, and we got to pick our favorites. I in in 2016, I had said my first choice was Scott Walker. That didn't last very long. Then my second choice was Ted Cruz, and he lasted long enough for me to vote for him in the state I reside, Maryland. Ultimately, the nominee was Donald Trump. And of course, without hesitation, I voted for Donald Trump. Against Hillary Clinton, of course. And if you can't be grown up enough to reach that point, I don't know what to do with you. But over on the Democratic side, they don't even want you to have a choice. The Democratic Party will have no democracy this year. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And let me just say for a moment, because I'm about to say things about Robert F. Kennedy Jr. that might make somebody leap to the conclusion that I think this guy is a, a, a good potential candidate for president. Couldn't be further from the truth. I don't want Robert F. Kennedy Jr. anywhere near the Oval Office unless it's some commemoration for the assassination of his uncle. And even then, it's iffy. It's a big family. I don't know if they all make the cut. I don't want him anywhere near the levers of power in this government, okay? And by the way, I feel that way about most Democrats. So that said, Bobby Kennedy, in his campaign so far, he's pulling around 19, 20% without really doing anything other than a couple of appearances and putting out some tweets. And some of the things he's tweeting about are incredibly vulnerable issues for President Biden. He has said, listen, I'm all for immigration, but what we've got on the border right now is a nightmare. It's open borders chaos. I mean, he's right. Now, I don't think he's the one to fix it, but the last thing Joe Biden wants to do is to debate somebody within his own party that disagrees with his policy on the border or his policy in Ukraine, which Kennedy has also been critical of. He's also been very critical of the censorship that the Biden administration has championed through agencies telling social media uh, corporations that they have to silence dissenting voices. Bobby Kennedy, I guess, really does believe in what the Democrats used to say they stood for, which was free speech and free expression. The last thing Joe Biden wants is a debate with a guy within his party who criticizes him on things like this. Because anybody who wants Twitter to stop censoring people or who wants the border to be protected or questions our strategy in Ukraine, well, they're a MAGA fascist. You see, that's the narrative. And there is no steering from the narrative. Is Bobby Kennedy a MAGA fascist? Of course not. I don't even know what a MAGA fascist is. It's made up. But if he has to debate these issues from somebody like Bobby Kennedy Jr., well, then that sort of kills the narrative that it's all those crazy right-wing Trumpers. So this morning, Simone Sanders. Now, Simone Sanders used to work for the Bernie Sanders campaign. Then she got a job uh, in the new Vice President Kamala Harris's communications department. Boy, oh boy, talk about a revolving door there. Nobody gets a job and works for Kamala Harris in Washington for more than like four months. They're just, they're just going through them like Kleenex over there. So Samantha so Sanders, she, she saw what time it was with Kamala Harris. She got out of there. Now she does cable news appearances, but she's a very influential. I think she actually has a job uh, with the Democratic National Committee. But she certainly today on, uh, on this Morning Joe show was speaking on behalf of the DNC. And I want you to listen to this exchange where Joe Scarborough, of all people, says, hey, well, you, you can't keep ducking this Bobby Kennedy guy. Right. Are there going to be debates? I mean, he's pulling at 20 percent. Bobby Kennedy Jr. Doing well. He's at 19 percent. Hasn't really 
gotten that that much out there. I mean, it's and I'm starting to hear more and more talk about him. Are we going to actually have a challenge here? I'm trying not to laugh, Joe. There's <laughs> not going to Wait, be. Can I just <laughs> can I stop you for a second? Yes. Do you know? How many people said the same thing about Donald Trump That's in 2015 true. on yes, this show? Except said I will the note. same exact Laugh. thing. Yes, because there was going to be a Republican primary. But I now think about that for a minute. You know, he, he's I'm trying not to laugh, Joe. He's pulling at 20 percent without doing anything. Joe Biden can barely make it through an afternoon uh, staged press conference where he only had to take two questions, and he literally had the script of the question on a card in front of him. And she thinks it's funny to think that a year from now, actually 14 months from now, when they finally decide who the Democrat nominee is, that maybe Joe Biden might have a challenge. She thinks that's funny. Scarborough says, oh, yeah, they laughed at Trump, too. And boy, wasn't this a reveal? Wasn't this a tell? Wasn't this saying the quiet part out loud? Well, back then in 2016, they actually had a Republican primary. I I hate to tell Simone Sanders and the Democrats at the DNC this, but there's going to be a primary for the Democrats next year. Now, they might not like the fact that there's a primary, but there's going to be one. The states will be conducting primary elections. There will be votes. I mean, I, it's, it's going to be news to Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina that there's no Democratic primary. But you see, as far as Simone Sanders is concerned and the power base within the Biden administration, it's it's just it's it's just a, a fait accompli. It's a it's 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 a it's a Potemkin primary. It's a it's a it's a play that we're just all acting out. Oh, oh sure, we'll go through the motions, but we know it's going to be Biden. There's 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 no so there's no reason to even talk about Bobby. Why are we even having this conversation? And now listen to where it goes from there, because this is this is so revealing not only about the hypocrisy. And the the un-American, anti-democratic instincts of the so-called Democratic Party in this country. But Simone Sanders, without knowing, listen, I I love the fact that she feels so comfortable over there. She's like, ah, it's just Scarborough, Mika, there's hardly anybody watching, and anyone who is watching is just a Democrat anyway. we're, We're family here. I can say the quiet part out loud. So she's comfortable enough to actually say what you're about to hear thinking that there's no real downside. There are no ramifications. I mean, everybody knows this. It's conventional wisdom. Here, here, listen to what she's about to say in terms of why the Democrats don't want democracy in their primary process. I really think that uh, the mealy mouth Democrats, as I like to call them, and some of my progressive friends who would like to live in a fantasy land, they need to come back to reality. Yeah, by the way, this is a woman who worked for Bernie Sanders calling progressive Democrats living in a fantasy land. This is this is a woman who worked for Bernie Sanders. There's anyone who makes over nine hundred ninety nine million dollars. We'll just confiscate it. You can live on less than a billion dollars. You don't need that money. We'll just take it and everything will be better off because look at how it worked in the Soviet Union. You you literally have to believe in fairy tales to buy into the so-called economic agenda of a Marxist like Bernie Sanders. But here she is throwing shade and Democrats who actually think maybe they could do better than Joe Biden. And the reality is this. The sitting president of the United States of America is a Democrat, a Democrat that would like to run for re-election so much so that he has declared a re-election campaign. Right. In that case, the Democratic National Committee will not facilitate a primary process. There will be no debate stage for Bobby Kennedy, Marianne Will- Marianne Williamson, or anyone else. To stand so we're going to have another so- Bobby. You hear that? You may not have caught it, but it's really clear what's going on here. The president is a Democrat. He wants to run for another term and therefore end of discussion. Because we're in power right now, damn it. And we will never do anything that might threaten power. Because everything in Washington, D.C., in politics is about power. The president is a Democrat. He wants to run for re-election, so the Democratic National Committee will not be facilitating a primary process or a debate. End of discussion. It's over because we are in power, and so we can and we will. And we're the fascists. 
We're the fascists. Uh, the mealy mouth Democrats, as I like to call them, and some of my progressive friends who would like to live in a fantasy land, they need to come back to reality. And the reality is this. The sitting president of the United States of America is a Democrat, a Democrat that would like to run for reelection so much so that he has declared a reelection campaign. Right. In that case, the Democratic National Committee will not facilitate a primary process. There will be no debate stage for Bobby Kennedy, Marine Will Marianne Williamson or anyone else. To so stand we're going to have and another Bobby. Bobby Kennedy in an empty chair in the debate, right? There will be no debating. Yeah, no debate. <laughs> the Democratic yeah. National Committee administers the debates, and they're not going to set up a primary process for debates to for someone to challenge the head of the Democratic Party. Yeah. There will be no debates. There will be no primary process. Oh, you can vote, but you will vote for who we tell you to vote for. We won't give you any other options. It's the Politburo. I mean, at least they're true to form. They're, they're sticking with their brand. And for everybody to say, well, they didn't have any debates uh, in 2020 for Trump because nobody challenged him. And if you dare say Joe Walsh, I am, I'm so sorry. You just, just go, go away. Sit down. Sit down. You're on timeout right now, Joe Walsh. All right, a little bit more of this. And, oh, remember the gas stoves? Yeah, the gas stoves. We got to talk about that. Oh, and I haven't even touched the Hunter Biden stuff. All right, we're going to cram it all in coming up in a moment. It's Larry O'Connor in for Mark Levin. Mark Levin. It's Larry O'Connor in for Mark Levin. And I don't want to leave you tonight without uh, expressing a bit of intensity on the growing scandal surrounding Joe Biden and the Biden family corruption. Uh, make no mistake, the walls are, in fact, closing in on Joe Biden. Uh, not only did we learn this week that there is an FBI whistleblower who has credible evidence, an unclassified document, by the way, at the FBI right now, according to Jim Comer and Chuck Grassley, congressman and senator, respectively, saying that there is a credible informant that has said that when he was vice president, Joe Biden took a meeting with a foreign company, a foreign dignitary, excuse me, a foreign country, and discussed an exchange of money for policy. Now, John Solomon, a very good investigative reporter in this town from Just the News, he has revealed that uh, his investigation tells him that that country is Ukraine. And he believes, based on his reporting over the years, that the policy had to do with the Biden administration urging Ukraine to move toward natural gas for energy, which is ironic considering they want to kill natural gas in this country. But they were pushing for Ukraine to embrace natural gas, moving away from coal and oil. Who benefits from natural gas? Who would benefit in Ukraine for that policy that Vice President Biden got injected into the Obama administration's dealings with Ukraine. Well, it would be one company, and that would be a company called Burisma, a corrupt company. According to our State Department, the current State Department calls Burisma a corrupt company in Ukraine. Burisma, a company that had just recently hired Hunter Biden for no apparent reason other than his last name. He hired him to the tune of over $80,000 a month. We still don't know what goods or services Hunter Biden provided, but we do know that then Vice President Biden got Ukraine to move toward natural gas, which benefited the natural gas company Burisma. Now, much of this was revealed in the Hunter Biden laptop story, actually, but it got censored. It got censored by Twitter and by news agencies because we were just a couple of weeks before the election and we couldn't let Joe Biden lose. But now we've learned that that letter of 51 intelligence community officials was put out by the Biden campaign. And it wasn't even to censor the story. It was just to give Joe Biden something to say at the debate when the issue came up. Here, listen. There are 50 former national intelligence folks who said that what this he's accusing me of is a Russian plant. They have said that this is has all the care for five former heads of the CIA. It was all for a talking point in the debate. Have a good weekend. Larry O'Connor, it's the Mark Levin Show.